Welcome to episode two of Shake Talk. Today we are checking back in with our attendee from episode one, Kim Wilson, out on the island in uh, British Columbia, Canada. And uh, today we're going to talk a, a little bit about, uh, you know, what's transpired since Kim started. Uh, she's about a month under her belt. She was probably about two and a half weeks when we did our first discussion. But she has had some major um, things come up, uh, good and bad. And, and we're here to share all of that because that's how we learn and, and progress with the rest of you. And then we're going to have a little, uh, we're going to shake while we're doing this. Kim hasn't done her, her session yet. Kim, you can go ahead. Um, the machine is running. And uh, while you're talking, um, you know, you, you normally do a, a couple of sessions a day, but if, if you feel comfortable talking while you're shaking, go ahead and just start going through what you would normally do as your own routine. You've kind of figured that out on your own, but I, I do want to hear an update on uh, what's been happening since we spoke to you last. So take it away. Okay. Um, I, I brought a little cheat sheet. So right now while I talk, I'm just going to sit and let my legs vibrate. That's fine. It is shake talk. <laughs> okay, so something really good has happened and I have really bad IBS and with that is constipation. I've been constipated since I had my first child 38 years ago and it's always been a serious issue. So right now I use magnesium citrate usually to go to the washroom because I am on a ketogenic diet yep. and that's something that you supplement anyway. So it actually is a boost that helps me to manage that constipation. But for some strange reason this week, I have gone to the bathroom almost every single day as soon as I get out of bed. So we're we're so, more regular. Dumb, but it's, it's a huge thing in my life that I've struggled with and that's amazing for me. So I don't know if it's really the cause of it yet, but I think it is. So that's the first thing that's really changed this last week. Um, now I'm usually not a person who manages well in the cold in the winter months. So I don't go out and walk a lot like I do in the spring and the fall because of the weather and the wind and the cold causes yep. me. So this machine has allowed me to get exercise twice a day and get movement twice a day. So that's a bonus too. And I think it's making a difference in many areas. Now, the other thing that I'm getting is therapy, the massage and the soothing aspect for me that I can't even say enough about that, Debbie. Like I've said that since the start, since I've started sitting on it from your instructions last week, that's when things really started changing when I started doing more of the sitting on it. Now I just get a little assistance from the chair to go down to it and I just keep going and I'm getting stronger. My balance is improving. It may not be a ton, but every little increment for someone like me with Durkham's disease is a bonus and a benefit in the long run. You're gaining and ground by the sounds of it. And I should have mentioned to you, um, th there's really only one study that, that has ever been conducted on the constipation piece. But for those of you that have been using a machine for some time, it's probably one of the, the main common side benefits. I don't talk about side effects. It's all about side benefits that you get with these machines. And it is very, very common that if it's a problem in the poop chute, um, it won't be a problem much longer. Um, also urinary incontinence um is is another big area and sitting on it is one of those there's a different reason everybody sits on it maybe it's for skin tone or maybe this guy's doing it for low back pain and you know maybe i'm doing it to to you know tighten things up down there but it is it is a very common um effect when you if, if you're constipated it does seem to get things moving uh yours would be a little twofold i would say that obviously the the main benefit uh, that most people experience but with the durkham's disease you know, that lymph, um, you know, boosting the immunity, knowing that you have the IBS issues. It, it's all just how it helps your body aid um, and accelerate in, in its own natural detoxification. If it's you... helping as far as I can tell. And I can't wait to see if I can now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reduce my magnesium citrate 
and see if it still manages to do its duty. Yeah, I'd be curious to see. Um, you, you had something else crop up this week that we should talk about. Is that the... The blood uh, pressure. Discovery that I... The salt stuff? Yes. Okay, well, remember last time we talked that I didn't know if it was sodium, a new food, but I had blood pressure spiking going on and it was quite bad. You know, it like went from some, you know, down in the bottom area up to like 160 over like 85, 90. So that's a danger for me and I'm very hypertensive, but I've been off my meds for months. So I thought, okay, there's something causing this. And we didn't know, we talked about it, but we didn't know. So we had to just adjust the sodium I took away everything I could for a few days and within two days my blood pressure actually leveled out and it's it even actually went too low because I took a four milligram hypertension pill because I was so scared of it getting too high so I took one four milligram pill and the next day I was way too low because I'd already reduced the sodium and then the blood pressure sank to like 99 over like 68 or something. So Dang. it's a touchy thing for me, but being off meds for so long already, and then that happened, I was kind of scared. I didn't know if it was the vibration, but we worked it out because you helped me figure that out. And this is, this is a perfect opportunity for me to sort of just reiterate, you know, just like exercise moves or, or tools or, you know, sometimes what works for one person today, um, you know, may not work for another person. And, you know, what, what's working for you today may not be as effective, you know, down the road. And, and what I can say is, you know, when you start moving your body and exercising, it's not just a, any of these questions are not vibration machine specific. They're more related to activity. And, you know, I, I think where things for you on not just the blood pressure, but the constipation, you know, as your body's systems and this machine helps improve the systems, you know, perhaps there was a spike related to the machine and, and, and maybe it was dissipating the salt into your system faster, or maybe it was detoxifying yourself. So the, 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 big, the big pat on the back for Kim, and I just want to express to many of you, it's taken us a long time to get to the point where our body is. And if you do have something, an adverse effect in, in the, you know, the first week of using this machine or even within the first month, it takes time for things that we're implementing into our body to, to, to come to fruition. And we talked last session with Kim about how sometimes, you know, we increase swelling short term or, or um, you know, we're going to the bathroom lots as an example, or you're, you know, you're full of energy. So, so how everybody reacts to the machine and, and what your body decides that's going to improve this week is, you know, going to vary from everybody uh, a little bit, but the, the constipation piece is very common. If it's a problem, it's usually not a problem. Uh, if you're using the machine, if you're unable to sit on the machine, the, the low back one where you kind of stand up and just hang over, you'll, you'll be able to get it into that area as well. And it should help improve for those that can't. Um, Kim's so spry and flexible now that, you know, she's doing all these aerodynamic moves on it. Um, and the, 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 the blood pressure thing, I have had a few spooks with clients and I'm only privy to, to this much of your life. I, I'm, de I, I'm the person dealing with the activity. And um, I always recommend if you're starting a vibration machine or with a vibration gun or anything that you're starting new, you know, try not to introduce too many new things at the same time. And you guys yeah. probably know this better than, than a lot of people that I work with, but um, Kim, you in particular, I mean, your body can react in a day to something that you've eaten or within the hour. Yeah. So with a vibration machine, just like a new pill, uh, anything, I'd like you to try and give it a couple, three weeks, ideally a month, just to sort of see how your body adapts and, and adjusts and decide, you know, what it's taking away from this. If you're adding a vibration machine and new meds and you just started keto and, and you, you took up running this week and at the end of 30 days, you're exhausted and having problems, it's hard to kind of eliminate things because you've introduced so many new things. So even though it's not a donut or a pill, a vibration machine 
is basically the same as, as exercising or, or, or going for a big massage if, if you're doing those type of things with it. So how does your body feel after you go for a big massage or how does it feel if you over exercise? So, you know, sometimes when we have things happen on the machine, we think it's a weird funky thing because it's a vibration machine, but sometimes those reactions would be similar just by food changes in your diet or activity changes as Kim has pointed. So push through, ask questions. That's the purpose for the page. Um, don't assume it's it's the machine, but it, it may be contributing. So if, if you do have a, a setback or something just doesn't seem right, those are the type of questions I want you guys bringing to the page so that we can all benefit uh, from the experience and the answer once we do get to that point. The good news is Kim, look at her showing off doing her moves. Um, you, you, you're fine with the sodium now, but you will keep us posted on that? Yes, I have to monitor it really carefully. Okay. It's something that I'm trying to stay off my meds. Okay. That's a huge thing for someone like me that's been on them for many years. And yes. to come off of those through my diet and exercise, because uh, I've been a walker forever. Yep. But this is my new favorite move. Yes, I was just going to say uh, something we're going to do going forward on our, our shape talk uh, with, with the various guests that I have lined up is everybody's got their two or three kind of favorite go-tos and, and I've asked Kim today to show us what her favorite go-to move is. So tell us what you're doing. Well, what I'm doing is when you taught us the sit sideways on the vibration machine, it turns it into a whole different motion. Yep. I'm very strong in the legs and the butt muscles. I've just always been strong there. So I'm trying to build strength in the and, a little bit. So, and I've also just had my pants removed. So I'm actually trying to build and strengthen my tummy muscles. Okay. What I learned last time was I just, I just actually enjoy the type of movement. And then I point my toes and squish everything I have. And then with the broken tailbone and the SI joint dysfunction, I have to stay very still and not move. Yep. Too low. But Kim, is your bum in the middle or are you more back to the edge? I'm more in the middle because yeah, that's what you want, less movement. Yep. Yeah. Not too much because my SI will separate. Yep. And you know I might work real good, good too is um or pull up my feet. Those hemorrhoid pillows, like a donut. Yeah. Try sitting on one of those or or take a yoga mat and, and cut a space for. The tailbone if you're finding but you seem to be managing fairly well there's always a workaround um especially with some of you with the lumps and the bumps that you have um you know sometimes they're just in the wrong spot for certain positions that you may or may not want to do on the machine so modifications need to be made um but yeah we're all looking for a little bit more core strength and stability and uh you know you're down there doing your massage anyway so so good for you for continuing with that variation and, and the tailbone's been okay? You haven't been sensitive with that at all since you started? Um, what I'm noticing is that from doing a lot of this squishing and tightening, I am feeling a bit stronger, okay. but, but, you know, I want to be able to see it in inches and in weight. And so that hasn't changed at all, but no. maybe one day soon it will. Strength, um, weight loss, bone density, there, there's certain benefits that, that we're all looking for, but some of them I do believe are longer term. There's short term, mid term, long term benefits. And yeah, a vibration machine, unlike a lot of other things, most people have some type of an immediate experience. You know, even the first time you try it, you feel better, you feel wired, you feel worse. It's pretty easy to validate something has happened to your body, whereas some technologies, you know, you got to use it for a while before you really notice subtle changes. Um, but things like strength, weight loss, and bone density, they are a longer term goal. And uh, especially with, with strength, you know, Kim's not carrying a lot of excess weight for her size and, and the condition she's dealing with. But I, I will say, uh, just like regular women, again, you know, losing weight and gaining strength muscle weighs three times what fat does. So sometimes, you know, the, the better um, indication is not the scale, the counting of the calories. A lot of these archaic systems are, are not um, conducive with the information we now understand about our bodies. But, but what I would, it, it's inches. It's for, you'll probably notice the strength, um, a bit of toning, things fitting a little bit differently, longer than you'll see that recognition on the scale. So, you know, do, I, I have customers 
back in my studio day that they get on the scale 10 times while they were at the studio. We, it's a mental screw that we do to ourselves. Oh, I gotta go see what I weigh. I gotta go see what I weigh. But you know, sometimes yeah. I, I encourage you to pay attention more to how you're feeling and moving and don't beat your, we beat ourselves up about enough things in, in this community, let alone the weight. So, but muscle does weigh three times what fat is. And it, it it's not uncommon to, to see a bit of a, a an increase in, in weight yeah. uh, short term. Um, and all the more reason to my point earlier, don't be changing a whole bunch of things at the same time you're changing a vibration machine. You know what? If you gain 30 pounds in the first month because you've made some dietary change and it's inflaming your body, you're going to blame the vibration machine and Debbie, you're not going to blame the food. So that's kind of the way this technology goes. But, um, and if you're not terribly active now and you're just starting out, it's not going to turn you into a workout queen. But I, I will say I'm very proud for somebody who was a walker, gardener primarily, um, as your tasks before the variety that you're experimenting with. And, um, you said something earlier on the call and I'm going to put you on the spot. You're not the only one in the house who's taking to it. No, actually I've been watching my husband get on it, uh, every single day now he's on it morning and night, just like me. Nice. He, it's time when he's, when I'm not around and you know, he has his own moment on it and he's using it for loosening up his body. He's 60 yeah. and he's just doing it for a soothing movement thing because he also does elliptical and works out every second day. So this is an, uh, I guess, yeah, accessory to feeling better in recovery. The, the cool thing for the guys, a lot of my guys that are athletic, especially guys don't warm up. They don't wind down. They don't stretch. You know, they, they, we don't do those things until we pull a groin playing hockey later in life. And um, a lot of my gym guys, the, the biggest complaint that I get from my gym goers is I don't feel sore the next day. You know, back in the day when we used to go to the gym and you did, the, it's the tear and the repair. That's, that's how our body, you know, creates inflammation short term. That, that's how your muscles grow. But the machine is, is so good at recovering. So even though he might just be doing squats or push-ups, it's kind of because of the nature of the technology, it's assisting in that recovery piece while you're doing the work. So you will not and should not feel as sore the next day. So a lot of my older guys, um, perfect situation like how your husband, look at her, no hands. Um, we're going to have to give her some dumbbells or something by next time. But it, it is, it's about warming up and winding the body down so it minimizes the injury. So if he is doing overdoing on the, the elliptical or other things, it, it just better prepares your body for whatever you're going to do to it next. And, and very much the same with um, uh, clinics. And, and, you know, a lot of the clinics are using the machines as a pre or post treatment. A big area of compliment right now is stem cells. So a lot of people that go in for a stem cell treatment, if you can afford to do such things, a lot of places will put you on a vibration machine prior to that stem cell it makes the stem cell injection more effective. And, and, you know, I always kind of say to my doctors, it kind of just better prepares your body for whatever you're going to do to it next. So um, if, if you do are doing other treatments or you're doing other things and you have access to that right now, many do not, um, you know, two to three minutes before you go do other things, that walk or the garden, if, if you guys are in those areas of the States where you can still do those things, um, it doesn't always have to be a big structured workout. Kim and I up here in Canada are getting into that time of year where getting out is not as much of an option. So that the fact that you're a month in and you're already into this regular routine and, and it's been contagious with hubby, um, yeah. good for you. And I, I can't thank you enough for sticking with it, Kim. I can't, I can't even tell you how much I am enjoying discovering new ways to, you know, hang your body, like even just like hanging your body, like we're hyper mobile, most of us. So yeah, we can bend down really far. So get down. Slow and controlled movement. Very slow. Yeah. Like, you know what, that's enough. Okay, just back up up the knees and be careful of the SI. I don't it's expect like, you to do hey, this one, but my help. favorite toe touch stretch. Right? Like, I get up. down here. Pelvic tilt. And then I come yeah, all, all the way up. And I've done that a little bit. That's a good one. And, I come and you need to squeeze your butt at that moment. And your calves. Mm -hmm. And your thighs. <laughs> again, Kim, once again, proving you are only limited by your imagination and your yeah. range of motion. 
And who cares if you just want to stand there for five minutes? Okay, just feel it, but do a couple pelvic tilts. Yeah, mix it up. The pelvic tilt squats are great. Um, Kim, Kim hasn't been doing the big elaborate workout. Her, her basic go-to move was, and homework for me, was perfecting the squat. And, you know, the basic of any movement, whether it's a push-up, a crunch, a plank, you know, understand the basics, how to do it effectively. You can always Google this stuff or look at some of the tips on my page. But the, the more effective your position, the, the better your technique, the more likely you're going to get the long-term benefit. And, and as Kim and I were joking a bit before we got on camera here, you know, I didn't learn any of these things in high school gym. Um, no. <laughs> I didn't learn until I got into the vibration machines because they made those exercises I thought I was doing right more challenging and it pointed out some of the diff I didn't know I shifted my weight to my toes because it took pressure off my knee that's how my body compensates you don't realize that on the floor no so um I would like to probably check in again with you in a few weeks um we will have uh more shake talks with Kim on a this is more of a long-term uh process I want to keep on track with Kim and, and we are going to be looking at other forms of, of talking on camera um Kim, Kim has Durkheim's disease, and I, I would like to have someone that, that I kind of interview and follow uh, on these talks with, with many conditions. And uh, part of the reason for my survey uh, on the page this week was to understand, I, I think I knew where everybody was coming from to a degree, but um, it's nice for everybody to share uh, the conditions, the co-conditions. And it's not always a, a fat disorder. You know, many of you are dealing with uh, lipolipidema or lipidema dercums, but maybe you have diabetes as well, or maybe you have food sensitivities. So there's lots of ways that your body can be affected. Again, I want to stress if you are starting the vibration machine new as Kim did, Kim was really good about not introducing a whole bunch of other things um, except salt. And that was great because it was a learning experience for both of us. So, you know, sometimes you just don't think about things. And, and, you know, you, 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 you don't, you know, something's, you know, something's changed, but it takes a little bit of time to go back and identify. So again, if, if you've introduced 30 different things this month in, in desperation, trying to make things work, it takes time for your body to adapt to anything new. And, and if there's going to be any ill effects, it, it may take a little bit of time for them to come to the surface. So um, if you're starting out new, stick with the machine for the first couple, three weeks before you're starting anything else. If you've got something booked, you got a big cleanse or, or something like that. There, there's certain things um, that go great with the machine, but I don't recommend starting a whole bunch of new things at the same time. That's my big point. And, and if you've overdone it, um, you know, sometimes the machine just makes you move and, and feel so good. And then, you know, you wake up the next day and you feel like you, you know, walk 10 more kilometers than, than you should have, um, get back on it for a couple of minutes. Sometimes less is more. If you have overdone on the machine or other facets of your life, it'll help you out that way too. What were you going to say, honey? I say something about that. Yes, so please. I have real trouble recovering from anything I do. So when I get on here in the morning, it's more of a soothing session. Okay. And get more done in the day I'm finding. I'm still able to do everything. And even sometimes now I've added a walk at night. Nice. I get and I sit in the chair and I start to hurt and I get on the machine and then I get up in the next morning and it is not as bad as it has been. Oh. So recovery has really changed for me. At least you, know, you have access to a tool now that you can use. Unfortunately, you know, Kim, much like many of you, she can't go for a masseuse appointment if she wanted to right now. Everything's kind of locked up. So a lot of the things that that maybe you would have been your go-to in the past for those situations are no longer an option. So I'm glad that, that this has, has transpired for you. Um, and to that point, it's not always a big workout. You know, it, Kim mentioned, you know, I'm sitting there and I'm feeling stiff and sore. Well, maybe just a couple minutes, you know, just, just so you can get to your next task. <coughs> um, yeah. For me personally, it depends on what I'm doing. And I, you know, I'm very busy and probably put too much on my plate many days, but two to three minutes really, it's not uncommon between calls or, you know, I've been, I, even though I don't hold a phone in my neck, I'm an old school banker. So anytime I'm on the phone, I, I have this tendency <laughs> to think I'm holding a phone between my neck and my shoulder and the tension, it's, you know, sometimes I'll just go sit on it and sit on my hands for a minute before my next call. Cause it wakes me up and shakes me up if you will. So, um, less is more, more often. Um, I've had a lot of questions this week about time, max time, 
you know, manufacturers have to give you an answer. And, and if I were to give you an answer, I would say total max that you should be using your machine in a day is probably about 30 minutes. Um, if you are doing fitness and you are pushing yourself and you're doing squats, you shouldn't last 30 minutes. Um, anybody can stand there for, you know, 20 minutes and, 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 and just shake if, if you're physically in, in that position, or, you know, if, if you're below baseline, it's easy to sit in a chair and put your feet on the machine for 15, 20 minutes. But I would prefer if you are below baseline, not super athletic, instead of committing to one big session, if time allows, break it into a couple, three smaller sessions and, and build from there. Um, and one of the big things I recommend is, is later in the evening, restless leg, you know, constipation, if, if it's not making you wired and it shouldn't, if you're just keeping it to a couple, three minutes, if you do a big 15 minute workout, that might perk you up. You know, some people can do a big workout and go to bed and sleep like a baby. I find if I do too much, I get a little exhilarated. So, you know, two to three minutes before bed, um, sitting on it, massaging just to soothe away and, and, and perhaps deal with some of the things that keep you up throughout the course of the night. Um, would be an example of a, of a, you know, it's not about a workout. It's a two to three minute relaxation session, if you want to look at it that way. And I think, Kim, you're using it later in the evening, not necessarily right before bed, but you're doing a later session, you said? Yeah, I'm, I'm usually on it around 9.30 or 10, but last night I did it late, right before bed. And that is not good for me, I found out. Oh, it worked you up? Well, I didn't want to go to bed. <laughs> yeah. It worked a little different. That's usually why I say if you are going to try you know, an evening session to, to help you sleep better, do it about a half an hour before you go to yeah. bed. Um, if you find it's, you know, you're exhilarated and it's work, you know, maybe you need to be a little longer, but if you find it was no issue, you know, maybe you're okay just before bed. It's one of those things you'll have to experiment with. And now, you know. Yeah, now I do. Cause I won't do it right before bed anymore. I know that now. That a girl, that a girl and keep with it. Um, we will probably connect again in a couple of weeks. Okay. And um, I, I just thank you for being so forthcoming and open about this whole process. And the, the main reason I'm, I'm, I'm uh, wanting to do a follow up with Kim today for my own personal reasons, but I know a few of you are in a similar situation as her, whether you have Durkham's or not. It's that fear of, you know, the last thing you want is something else that, that's not going to work. And, yeah. um, you know, sometimes you need to hear it from someone other than me that's telling you how awesome it is and, and teaching you how to use it. Sometimes it's nice to talk to somebody that, that, that lives a life like you and, and lives with the aches and pains that you do. And nobody wants to be the guinea pig. So thank you, Kim, for offering to be the guinea pig. But um, the fact that you've stuck with this um, as long as you have is, is the only way it could have come to fruition. And I can't make anybody do anything. So, so thank you for your own discipline and your own diligence. You know, the, the hard part of these machines isn't the hard work and, and learning all the moves. It's, it's like anything. It's just getting into that habit sticking with it and unfortunately I know in this community very often there, there is a, a setback or there is a disappointment and there's nothing more demotivating than getting something that you thought was supposed to make you feel better and it made you feel worse so if you do have an adverse effect or something happens with the machine nine times out of ten it's related to overuse too, yeah. too often um you know if, if you're coming from a place of inactivity now you wouldn't go for a 20k walk um, yeah. you know, without paying for it for the next day anyway. So same thing with the machine. I, you know, keep your first few sessions to under five minutes, regardless of what you're doing. See how you feel. You could always put more sugar in the coffee later. Does that yeah. make sense? Listen to your body because I've, I've already run into that issue myself, Debbie. Good. And honestly, you told me not to do something. One of the sessions that we talked and I did it anyway, and it was too much, and I hurt my shoulders. So I backed off, and that's all you have to do is listen to your body, go slow, like sit in the chair for the first week and do this. Who cares? I love just sitting here watching television, just holding my hands like this. Yeah. It, it is a nice passive way to, you know, and it's no different than if you were sitting on the couch, just yeah. doing thing, right? That too, but I love it on this way. <laughs> With the lymph thing, I do get a little, you know, when you move, lymph moves. So again, the reason I nag about the more frequent, shorter sessions, regardless of, of you know, whether you're exercising or not on these machines is um, with the lymph piece, you know, especially when you're first starting, there's probably some junk in the trunk and, and we need to give things a bit of a kickstart. And, and to Kim's point, exactly right. If, if you're comfortable or there's fear at all, 
you know, you can sit in this, in a, in a stool, put your feet on the machine, at least get used to how it feels before you commit to standing on it. Like anything out there, it's going to take your body a couple of weeks to assimilate to this new environment, what it feels like. And depending on the type of machine that you are using and its capabilities, yeah, two to three minutes, whenever your body, as Kim's point, you know, listen to your body. If it's telling you it needs energy or it needs to poop or it hurts, give the machine a try before you go for the Advil. Yeah. And it change it up. Do whatever you do, whatever feels good at the moment. I'm, I, I am kind of in a little bit of a routine, but honestly, yeah. whatever I feel like when I wake up in the morning is where I'm dealing. Yeah. It's what now, drives the workout to a degree. Yeah. And you don't have to have Durkheim's disease. I mean, this morning, no. you know, the last thing I wanted to do was punish my kids with more school. And so yeah, I know it's really nice outside and, you know, but, but at the end of the day, um, you, you've just been a, a really good uh, spirit. You've, you've, you've opened your mind to this. And what, what I love about this community is, is there is a willingness to, tr we, we live in that fine line of, you know, we wish science knew better, but we know it doesn't. And, um, you know, you're not going to wait for a solution. So um, everybody's willing to experiment, but experiment um, conservatively. How's yeah. That? Yeah. Right. And I mean, if everybody ever knew me, like I'm about on year eight or nine now dealing with learning about it, getting diagnosed. Like I I've been on this journey and this path for a long time and I found a way in a food plan to lose my obesity weight. I found other avenues that have helped me survive this disease along with the bucket load list of everything else I have. But us Durkham's disease people, we tend to have a lot of comorbidities. So we're a balancing act as it is, but this, this is amazing. That's all I can say right now. Cause like it's making COVID isolation better. It's making my mental health better. I'm feeling better now. A lot of my pediatric parents that I work with, you know, the, the, the problem is the kids want to be on all the time. And, you know, it's COVID. I mean, it's something to do. You know, yeah. they have to be doing big exercises all the time. So I've got a lot of little kids that are sitting on it, putting their feet on it, and they're playing their, their video games or doing their homework. I have my morning coffee yeah. with vibration. When I start out, I sit and have my coffee with it. Nice. <laughs> Doesn't matter where you start as long as you start. That's Thanks right. for your time again today. Thank you, Debbie. Um, I will, uh, this, this will, will air, uh, very soon. And I look forward to a follow-up with you in probably a couple, three weeks ago. Can't wait to hang out. Awesome. Thanks, my dear. See you later. Bye everyone. Keep vibing.